right, now let's take a look here at our next type of object, and that is our topic objects. All right, we've already kind of talked about topic objects a bit, but topic objects, very common object because they basically hold your chunks of content, for lack of a better word. And what we mean by chunks of content is really your text, your graphics, and your tables. The content that would appear underneath a heading, in other words. All right. Your topic objects can include other objects inside of them, such as file objects, which hold your graphics, and then your hyperlinks as well. Basically, the content that appears in the body of your document is primarily going to come from a topic object. And because of that, they are our most commonly used object in the library. Topic objects will have a text editor option or toolbar inside of them that allows you to perform a lot of word processing functions such as applying styles, drawing tables, inserting graphics, and so on. And we'll take a look at that here in a moment. All right. Now, inside of topic objects is where you will apply your styles to your text because when you are adding text to uh, your author library, you are adding it inside of a topic object. One, one hurdle to kind of get over to when you are working with topic objects is just keep in mind that author it and especially the topic objects are not a what you see is what you get or WYSIWYG environment. Topic objects are not a print preview of what that topic will look like when it is published. It is uh, a preview of what that topic looks like inside of your library. The only way to, to see what that topic will look like in its final published form is to actually publish a book that the topic is in. All right, so hopefully this will uh, this concept will become more apparent to you as we go through the training. But keep in mind that when you're working with topic objects in the library, the topic object may look one way. But when you publish it to HTML help, for example, the styles may look different, spacing may look different, even the graphics inside of those topics may look different from the preview that you had turned on inside of your library. Same thing. If you print that uh, topic object to Word, for example, that Word document may have formatted the, the text of that topic object in a different way from what it looked like in HTML, even. It all has to do with the way your styles and your publishing templates are set up. So authored again, not a what you see is what you get type of environment. All right, so here's an example of a topic object. The topic object has this toolbar here for you to perform your word processing functions. This box here is where you enter in the heading for your topic. And then this big white space here is for you to enter in the content for that topic. All right, so the content for that topic is anything that you want to follow this heading. So it can be graphics, could be text, could be tables could be a combination of all three. Uh, the length of your topic is completely up to you. Uh, we recommend the smaller the better uh, because the, the smaller they are, the more reusable they are in multiple locations. All right, it's the difference between having a topic with one to two paragraphs versus a topic that when published goes on for pages and pages and pages. All right, the best practice is really if you have a heading, make a new topic object. So anytime you encounter a heading, if you catch yourself trying to put in a heading and then applying a heading style to it, even a subheading style, that may be your cue to create a new topic object in that scenario, okay, instead of creating lengthy topic objects in AuthorIt. All right, so here we have this topic object, X1000 description. And we can publish that one topic object to the multiple outputs, as we saw before. So let's take a closer look at our topic objects. Okay. 
Topic objects are these little piece of paper icon objects here. You are going to have quite a few of them in your library over time as they are those most commonly used objects. All right, now to create a topic object, you can do so from two different places. From the author ribbon, you can go to topic, select your template. Let's give it a name here. warranty information and hit OK. That's one way to create a topic. Another way to create a topic is from inside of a book. So you remember how I said our, our book editor view is our one-stop shop view for working with books and we can actually create other types of objects directly inside of this view. By going to the piece of paper icon here, clicking our down arrow, selecting our template, okay, and putting in a heading or description. Let's go ahead and save that. All right. Now that topic object was created underneath whatever object we had highlighted on the left hand side. So right now we have this object X1000 product invo selected. So that means if I go to create another topic object, it will be created underneath that one. But I can use my sequence and hierarchy arrows to change that if I'd like to. Let's say I want to create a new topic underneath getting started Let's create it underneath the setting up your teleportation device. Then I would select that topic, go up to my new topic object icon, and select the template, and put in a heading here. Okay. All right, now another way to save the book is to select this little disk icon here. So there's multiple ways to save. We've got to save all up here. We've got a save book here. You can also hit Control S if you want to. Now, why is it better to create topic objects in the book rather than from the author ribbon? The reason for that is because when I created this new topic from this view, all it did was to add it to the folder. It didn't add it to any books. In order for it to be added to any books, I would have to then take the additional step of clicking and dragging it into my book. Okay, Just by creating the topic from this view, it only adds it to the folder. It doesn't add it to the book. Whereas this view, it creates the topic directly inside of that folder, or that book, excuse me. All right, so very important distinction here. If you're just creating topics from the author ribbon, it's only adding it to the folder. You have to remember to then add it to your book by clicking and dragging, okay? So there's a possibility of human error there but if you are creating objects from inside of the book, then a little bit safer for you. All right. Now, when you create objects from this view, it is still saving that object to whatever folder you had selected on the left-hand side. So right now we had X1000 selected, so all of these new topics are being added to the X1000 folder. All right. So here is my new topic here. Let's go ahead and give it a proper heading here. Go ahead and hit save. 